Hey guys, welcome back to another one here on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about radio controlled car electronic speed controls. How do you select a radio controlled speed control for your specific car? And why don't speed control manufacturers place the actual current ratings right on the case of the speed control? Those are only a couple things that we'll be diving into today and we're going to look at this from the most simplistic form so that we can really take something that sounds complicated, sounds complicated, complex, simplify it so it's going to make everyone's lives easier. That's the goal, let's get started. The most basic application that is easiest to visualize is a propeller turned by a motor powered by a battery and speed control. If you take all those components and you set it up on a bench and then you experiment, you'll see a couple big points that are worth noting. If we take that system and begin to apply throttle to it, we arrive at a constant motor speed and it pulls a certain amount of power. If we increase the throttle, we're gonna accelerate that propeller to up to a certain point, pulling a little bit more load, and then it's gonna arrive at constant speed and pull more power. If we go and decrease the throttle and then accelerate it very harshly, we're gonna see that we pull a good amount of power for a little bit, and then it comes down to that constant rate at constant speed of that prop. The important part here is that we're seeing the performance of this propeller match the amount of throttle that we're inputting. As we apply more throttle, we pull more power when we get to that constant speed. There's not too many outside variables that affect this system. However, when it comes to radio control cars, all of this is right out the window because it doesn't work. Simply put, if we accelerate a radio control car, they typically take a lot longer of a time period to hit the top speed relative to an airplane spinning up the propeller to maximum speed. Because of this, it's going to pull more current, demanding more torque for a longer period of time from our radio control car system. And that alone would suggest that the radio control car is going to be pulling more current under acceleration, probably exceeding the maximum continuous specifications for your typical speed control. That is just in terms of acceleration where harsh acceleration is gonna draw a significant amount of power and if you're not accelerating that hard then you're going to not draw as much power. Now if we were to look at just constant speed, a radio control car driving through some environment, even there there's so many factors and variables that come into play that your power levels are going to be fluctuating and changing rapidly. Imagine driving a radio control car down roadway, you're gonna have a constant amount of current being pulled but then all of a sudden you get to a certain section of the road and it starts to ramp up. Now the car is going uphill and you're going to be pulling more power. If we take that on-road scenario and change it so that the radio control car is now operating somewhere in an environment that is off-road. If you're running through a sandy beach or very tall grass you can imagine that the amount of power that you're gonna pull at constant speed would then increase. And as soon as you hit some level flat ground that vehicle is going to begin to unload, not require as much torque, therefore not pull as many amps as it would be if it was going through the same off-road conditions. The reason why we go through all these scenarios is to connect the dots between these variables and factors that affect the speed control, which then leads us to talk about why manufacturers of these speed controls don't actually place current values on every single one of these radio controlled speed control type products. If radio control car electronic speed control manufacturers all place these values of current on the electronic speed control product, this would cause a lot of confusion for those who are wishing to purchase the product. And it is this exact reason why we don't see the current values being placed on the cases of all of our radio control car electronic speed controls. Now this leads us to the most important part of the video. If we don't actually have these values of current being specified right on the case of the speed control, how do we know which electronic speed control to purchase for our radio control car? This is where we take all the complexities and factors that make it very difficult to understand the current that we're pulling in our speed control, we throw that out the window and we introduce a very simplistic solution to make it very easy for all of us to purchase radio control car speed controls. 
So how do we do this? Well, it's quite simple. We just need to relate the speed control type that we wish to purchase with the vehicle type that we are trying to fit a speed control to. Simply put, I just purchased a speed control for my 118th scale vehicle. All I needed to do is select the speed control that it was rated for being a 118th scale size and purchase that for my 118th scale vehicle. The reason this works so well is because as vehicles get larger, the amount of power that we have to pull from our speed controls increases. If we're going to purchase a speed control for a 1 8 scale size vehicle, all we need to do is match our vehicle up to the speed control that is rated for a 1 8 scale vehicle. Now you might be thinking this is an oversimplification to a more complex problem, but it's really not. If you expect to operate your 1 8 scale vehicle in the typical range of what 1 8 scale vehicles deliver, you're not going to have a problem. However, if you wish to operate your 1 8 scale vehicle at performance levels that are well outside of that maximum typical expectation, the 1 8 size, this is where you're going to get into trouble. If you wish to push that vehicle, just step up to the larger speed control size for that class and you're going to be fine. But wait, what happened if something went wrong along the way and we ended up picking out a system that actually delivers a significant amount of performance that our speed control is just not up to that type of task? Well, this is where we have to use the big number one rule of radio controlled electric power systems. Once you get everything installed, you have to check the temperature after you're running that radio control vehicle. You want to check it, not at the very end of the run, but even part way through the run so that you're making certain that you're you're not exceeding the thermal limitations of that speed control. You can probably find it right in the instruction manual for that electronic speed control. And it's really that simple. A cool operating electronic speed control is going to keep that smoke on the inside and that's exactly where we want it. Well guys, that pretty well wraps it up. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.